Hi everyone, I'm Justisa and welcome to Dark History of Sweden. Today we'll talk about a very interesting case with lots of drama surrounding it. It was a gloomy autumn night, 5th of September 2008, when Agneta Westlund, 63, was found beaten to death. Her husband found her and immediately called the police. Agneta and her husband, Ingemar Westlund, were at their house in Mistischär, Loftehammer, surrounded by woods and a lake. Loftehammer is a small community with 800 inhabitants. During the summer, a lot of tourists travel there and they can have up to 20,000 people in little Loftehammer. So you can understand that when something dramatic as a murder happens, everyone will know about it. Agneta goes out for evening walk with their dog. When she doesn't return, her husband went out to look for her. He founds her and calls the emergency number. The call came in at 22.15 and the police arrived at 22.30. When the cops arrive, he tells them that he had been out looking for her. He had been driving around with his four-wheeler while looking. When he arrives by the lake's shore, he finds her, but also hears someone rowing away aggressively and quickly. It sounded like they were in a hurry to get away. He couldn't really see them in the dark, but he was sure of what he had heard. But he believed that it was either the murderer or an animal. During the investigation of the crime scene, they find her body at the shore, just by the water. A bit further up, there's a blood-stained pine tree. And by that tree, they also find a wristwatch. The theory the police now have is that the struggle had started further up than where the body was found. They also questioned the damages taking place down by the lake. There were no weapons or anything around her that could have given her such severe wounds. When the forensic technician and forensic expert arrives at the scene, they have difficulty explaining how it could have happened, except for the fact that this was a murder and no accident. They come up with several scenarios of what could have taken place, but they were all agreeing on that there had been some kind of stabbing with a turn or a twist, because one of the wounds on her thighs, the flesh had ripped off from the muscle tissue. One theory was that she was hit by a car, another that she was tortured with an angle grinder, and there were so many theories and scenarios, but what really happened to her, and who would do this to her? The first and main suspect is the husband. They had all perceived him to be very calm and collected for someone who just found his wife of 42 years to be dead and most likely murdered. There were several factors that the police found strange with the husband's behavior during the night. He laid on the sofa watching teletext on the TV, waiting for the news about the murder to be released. And when it finally released, he reacted in a peculiar way. His mood changed and he muttered to himself, now it's finally out. They also found out that when Agneta went out with the dog, she always leashed him. But the leash was still at home, on the kitchen table. And a police dog marked a certain spot in their yard. And when Ingemar noticed, he rushed out, but then immediately turned around and started urinating. All of this, and the lack of empathy from a person who just lost someone dear to him, made him a prime suspect. And after a discussion with the on-duty prosecutor, they decided to arrest him as a suspect. During the interrogation, they find out that he had been mowing their lawn with a lawn tractor. They investigated it and the blade lengths matched some of the wounds on her and it also matched up with the theory that she was run over with a car. On top of that, they also found grass in her wounds, which strengthened their conviction that Ingemar Westlund had murdered his wife. They sent the lawn tractor as well as the four-wheeler to the forensic unit to see if they could find blood or fabric matches on them. 
If the police and prosecutor couldn't find heavier proof within seven days, Ingemar would be released, since it was only theory. After being held in custody for 10 days, Ingemar is released because of lack of evidence. His daughter rushes home to him. The entire village knows about the murder, and they all believe that he murdered his wife, Agneta. Even though the forensic investigation couldn't find any blood or fabric on any of the vehicles they had received, the police didn't want to discard that as a possible cause. Even when a detective from Stockholm tries to make them look at it from a different perspective, they won't budge. Five months after Agneta's death, they dropped the theory of Ingemar running over his wife Agneta with the long tractor. They tried themselves driving over half a pig carcass sewn into a gene material to see if it resulted in similar wounds. What they realized was that they couldn't drive over it. It only pushed the body forward. They tried backing over it and that worked, but who would think about that if they were in effect? With dropping this part of the investigation, it also meant that Ingemar was no longer connected to the murder and was exonerated. But this also meant that they were back on square one. What happened to Agneta? Was it really a murder? And if it were, who did it? A year after Agneta's death, Ingemar gets a phone call from the police. They now know what had happened. Ingemar and his children would finally get closure. They had to go back and rethink what could have caused her death, and that is when they realized that they had found hairs on Agneta's clothes. They had first disregarded it as a dog's hair, but after tests and DNA matching, it came back negative. It wasn't dog hair. After some more testing, they figured out that it belonged to a deer. At first, they believed themselves to have an explanation to this. On their way to the crime scene, some of the staff had hit a deer with their car. They believed that it was them who had accidentally left the hairs on Agneta. But to be able to totally discard this theory, they called up Professor Jöran Eriksson from Sweden's University for Agricultural Sciences and asked him to take a look at some samples. He could quickly determine that it was a moose who had caused the damages. But with further testing, he also found a lot of moose saliva on her clothes. And now he could explain how it had happened. Most likely, Agneta was walking the dog without a leash. It ran ahead and she heard how it started barking at something. Walks over there and is met with a moose bull. Picks up the dog and walks backwards away. This infuriates or scares the moose, who goes in for an attack. Agneta falls backwards and the moose tramples her until she dies. The worst part about all of this was the fact that Ingemar, in his testimony, had said that he had heard a loud ruckus while he was looking for Agneta, and he even suspected that it could have been a moose. But the interrogator had glossed over it and missed it. Ingemar was cleared, but a lot of people in the little village still believed him to be a murderer, so he had to move away from the little town of Loftahammar sell their house and move to Stockholm. Just imagine, you find your spouse brutally beaten and dead, and when the police arrive, you are the main suspect of murder. You don't have the chance to even mourn or bury a loved one, because now you are accused of being a murderer of your own wife. And from this point forward, your life will never be the same again. For this research, I read a lot of articles and I also watched a two-part documentary and it was so tragic and sad to see Ingema's testimony and the way he had to like hold back the tears and the sadness and the frustration. I'm not gonna lie, I, I cried a lot. 
I, I really felt his pain and agony. I will link the documentary down in the information box. I, I forgot what it's called. Um, if you want to read it, read it, see it. Uh, it is in Swedish and it is on a Swedish page, but if you can and want to watch it, it will be there. That was all I had on the case of Agneta Westlund. Thank you so much for watching. Next time I will talk about another murder that shocked Sweden. I also want to take the time to thank you guys for watching and supporting me. While I'm recording this, I think I'm like on 476 subscribers or something like that. And my goal for this year is 500 subscribers. And it would make me really, really, really happy if we could make it before the end of this year. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. It would make me so, 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 so happy to actually be able to reach that goal. Uh, it is insane. I did not think that I would actually be able to, but I had my hopes. And you guys just... You're so amazing and I am so thankful and grateful. And yeah, I I'm excited for the future of this channel. I really am. So, with that put aside, I want to say thank you once again for watching. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe and help me hit that goal, and hit that bell so you don't miss a video. Take care of each other and yourself, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!